everybody, how's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know who this is. This is Kevin from the Card Progression Podcast. The podcast Rolling Stone says initiates profound discussions with rock and artists, allowing fans to discover the creative workflow of their favorite musicians and understand the factors that make the band succeed or fall from fame. We are all sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best for your custom computing needs. Get $100 off your entire build code CVPod at darkfusionsystems.com. Links are for the podcast below. Let's go to our feature presentation. We're going all the way to Germany now with Sven from the band Rising Insane, the metalcore post-hardcore mix. Is coming out the brand new album called Wildfires on August 23rd. We talk about the greatness that is German music festivals. We talk about what Rising Insane did on Wildfires in terms of the overall idea behind the album, the lyrical idea behind it, but most importantly, the expansion of sound and the somewhat timidness they had going into it, adding some samples, adding some synths in there, but how this absolutely expanded the sound going forward for the band. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast. You know when it comes to anything heavy music related, if you're going to go to different parts of the world, you know you're going to want to go to places like United States, Australia, and of course Germany, and that's exactly where we're going right now. This band fits in that metalcore, post hardcore rather big realm, and it's a great realm to be in, so you're going to enjoy this one with a brand new album called Wildfire. It's coming out on August 23rd. Get ready for it because it's a good one. So please welcome Sven from Rising Insane, the podcast. So Sven, welcome to Core Progression Podcast. Kevin, thanks for having me. I'm the guitar player of Rising Insane from Germany. We are based in the north. It's in the near of Bremen. So if anybody comes <laughs> ever to Germany, you should definitely check out Bremen. It's, uh, yeah. Dude, you give me thanks ideas. for having me. I'll say, give me ideas because I haven't been over to Europe in over five years at this point, and I need to go back at some point in time. And my whole plan is I just want to go there, spend like 21 days there, and just every day I want to be a different part of, of the continent, be in a different country, maybe same country, but different been city, to Germany? and see a show. What was that? Have you ever been to Germany? I've never been to Germany. Okay, you should definitely do so. I, I also have never been to America, honestly, but I, I've been to Canada some years ago. I was uh, in Montreal, uh, be, uh, working wise because in, in 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 the daily life I still have a, a normal uh, uh, nine to five job, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that uh, that's basically it. I feel you should pain. definitely check out uh, uh, Germany, especially in the summer. We have great festivals in here. For example, like Button. <laughs> yeah, my, one of my buddies, he's like, dude, if I'm making enough money next year, you and I are going to Germany for either Rock and Ring or Rock and Park, and I'm just like, dude. I'm in. And then I saw what Vakken was like. I'm like, okay, we got to go to that. But I'm pretty sure like by the time like tickets got announced, they were sold out in like an hour. And I'm like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just on the same day. It's done. It's unbelievable. Vakken is like a miracle. <laughs> I, I, I got to experience a German festival at some point because I've, I've been to plenty of American festivals. Some good, some bad, some absolute travesties of festivals. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you guys have a down path so much better when you've got festivals that whenever you say the name of everyone just thinks of oh, this is a high-quality festival. There's nothing that really goes wrong there. We're going for it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. There, there are also some in Germany that uh, they they don't have such a good reputation. <laughs> but but the big ones that everybody knows, they are just great. Like Rock, Rock am Ring, Rock am Park, Wacken, uh, Full Force, Summer Breeze, they are just great. They, 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 are, just, uh, they are just for heavy music. Okay. I love the idea of Summer Breeze. I'm like, oh, this should be a festival of just chill, relaxing music. And nope, it's just heavy as hell. Like, it it's is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely not for chill. It's it's uh, really heavy music. Oh, absolutely. And that means, you know, you guys got to end up getting on some of those lamps at some point in time. I mean, I can't remember if you guys have been on any of those. But if they, if you haven't, Rising Insane has to make your way their way onto a bunch of these lineups so that everyone, you know, that goes to these festivals and knows how high quality they are, get to see you guys play. Yeah, absolutely. This is a target. We, we've unfortunately never been there to these big festivals. We are still in the bubble of the, of the uh, yeah, middle-sized festivals, I would say. And uh, it's great. We, we cannot complain about it. But uh, it's always the aim of each band to play anytime at Wacken, Rock am Ring, Rock am Park, Summer Breeze, Full Force, all these kind of things. It would be, that would be really awesome. Reload Festival, something like that. Yeah. It's great. Because not only just for the experience of actually playing a festival like that and seeing how many people get in your music, but from a standpoint of the band, it's just a piece of information and just an accolade that you can keep for yourselves. Like, hey, we got a chance to play Rock and Ring, Rock and Park, Full Force, 
Bakken, uh, Summer Breeze. We got a chance to play those, and this is what happened. And I've seen some bands go to festivals that nobody really knew, and then like the next year they were and end up being like one of the biggest bands at the festival that yeah. year, just because. It's it's somewhere else. So many people can get a chance to see you play, even if it's just hearing your music and passing. But that's a moment for people to connect with you as a band and say, oh, I want to go check these guys out. Like when I got the press release for you guys, I'm like, OK, I'll go check this out. We'll see what happens. I've never heard of Rising yeah, Insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I really would say that this is the benefit of a, city, uh, of a festival that you can actually have if you are a smaller band like us, because if you if you if you. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't call it a problem, but but if you have the situation to to get uh, your music to more and more people, the the best way to to get it done is by festivals. For sure, the festivals have to book you through your booking agency, but at the end, it's all about to get your music to, uh, to the people. And for sure, you can do it with social media and Spotify and mm -hmm. all these kind of things. But it's it got difficult in the last years and. Uh, I, I think the festivals is the easiest way to to get a, a little bit more, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I don't know if famous is the real word for it, but uh, to, to 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 get uh, getting better known by by the audiences. That, yeah, that, that, that that's the main goal. Yeah, I'd have to agree, especially with rock and metal when it comes to getting uh, I wouldn't say significant notoriety, but getting like notoriety from people that are absolutely going to be listening to your music. Because you think about this, we go to festivals as fans, we go to the festivals that are going to play the music and feature the music that we really like, especially for both of us, I'm pretty sure on the heavy side of things. So that's where <laughs> yeah, we're going to sure. go. And if we see certain bands that are there and we get to hear them for the first time, whether we're waiting for a different band, whether we're waiting in line to get some food and this band is playing on the side, we get a chance to listen to the music, actually be present in the moment and see how the band on stage is going to influence that idea of who they are, what they sound like, if the positive and really get into it because you have people in front of you that are actively engaged and actively in listening to the music that you have out there. Of course, is the net wider online with streaming and social media? Absolutely. But how much of that is very passive and very easy to jump back to something that you absolutely love and know and you're not really willing to give a chance to? Because with Spotify, it's like you can click on something. If you don't like in the first yeah. 10 seconds, you're going to go somewhere else. At a festival, it's different because you have to listen to it at some yep. capacity. And if you feel like, hey, I kind of like this, you're going to get closer and closer to the stage. Remember yeah, the band's and, name and check them out later. And you you get a real feedback. Mm -hmm. If you go through the audience after your show, when, when you might have a drink with them or uh, meet at the merch table or something like that, then you get an honest feedback. It's 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 Sometimes it's much more worth than just to have a count on monthly listeners on Spotify. We, we, we are always proud if we say, okay, oh, wow, with this month we have 100,000. It's yeah, check. Wow, it's great. <laughs> but... It's it's not about uh, what it's all about. At the end, is playing live mm -hmm. and playing through, through the audiences. And um, even if we have a look and on, on, on the tour that we played in the beginning of this year in April and May, uh, together with the band Set, uh, Set Your Sails, um, it was great. We had so many sold out shows, and and it was just awesome. And to get that reputation back from from the audience, from the fans, and to see at the merch table that that, that they are really satisfied with our show, with the music, with, with, with the performance that we actually gave to them. That's what it's all about at the end, honestly. And that's much more worth than having a, a good count on, on Spotify or something like that. For sure, it's easy to tell if you have a number like 100,000 mm -hmm. monthly listeners. I'm, I'm great with it, but it's... it's uh, I, I see so many German bands that are so great and they are just having numbers like 10,000 or 15,000. Mm -hmm. But if you see them playing live, they are huge. That's And th this is something that we have to be aware of when we are going to listen to new music and when we are going to attend new concerts, just to see... We just have to see it as as, as a new band, as uh, to 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 enjoy it and to see. Okay, is this something for me? And if I like it, I give it a spin on Spotify or I buy the record as as mm -hmm. a vinyl or a CD or something like that. And and we should do that definitely. I, I think you're absolutely right, and especially from the standpoint of the overall like reception, the overall critique from the fans, and you're seeing how they react to it, especially in a live setting, you get to see that right away. You get to see that instant reaction, whether it's positive or negative, and you get to continue to build off of that. Either, hey, this is what we're doing during a show, and it's not working out because the crowd's not reacting to it as well. Okay, what do we need to change up to make that happen? 
or hey, things are going really well. People are really coming out to the merch table. They're buying our stuff afterwards. Now we'll see how we can maximize out on this. And you're getting that direct feedback. Whether you're on Spotify, you know, you see the number on there. And so many people use that number as the size of a band because it's so easily quantifiable for the human brain. Yeah. Where, yeah, if I see 100,000 listeners, okay, that's easily yeah, better than 10,000. It's the same 10, with Instagram today, these days. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's, uh, if, if, if you have as, 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 as an account on Instagram 50,000 followers, then you're big. It, it, it doesn't matter where, 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 they, where they are from or something mm-hmm. like that. It's just, just the number and then you are big. Yeah, but, but the difference between like what I'll say Spotify numbers and like a crowd size of the shows, a crowd size of the show, those people are engaged with your music. They're coming to a show. I've seen I've seen artists that have had close to a million Spotify monthly listeners, even more than that. And they'll go and play in front of a crowd and there is really no crowd that is there because yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe the live show isn't there or maybe they were one of those bands or artists that end up buying the streams or they got put on a playlist. People liked one song or maybe liked one part of a song and then just pass them by. And yeah. I've seen bands that have lower overall like monthly listener counts on Spotify and they end up packing out a room of like 1,200 people sold yeah. out like and it's a struggle to get a ticket on resale after two days. So it's an incredible <laughs> thing to look at where you're seeing the direct feedback and you of course it's great to look at a number because it's quantifiable, like on social media, like on Spotify, but it doesn't tell the whole story because that's in a virtual world. That's not the real world. So when you get people live, you're gonna see how that happens. So when you guys play live, yes, a hundred thousand Spotify listeners. Uh, you guys have been growing for years, so that's a very good thing to see from four different albums, especially the fourth one coming out on the 23rd. So it's well earned to get to that point. And you see it when you play live too, that's, you know, there's substance behind there because people are coming out, seeing you play live, staying for your show and coming and talking to you and interacting with you at the merge table afterwards. Absolutely. And I, I was like, I couldn't think I can say it any other way than that, but you've got a brand new one coming out on the 23rd called Wildfires and let, let's jump into that a little bit because I want to get more people into this and get ready for this album to come out. So what can you tell me about this album in terms of the overall idea behind it? And of course, we can all go listen to the singles, but what can we expect in the songs that have yet to be released? Honestly, what what, what the people can expect of it is, is a completely... Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I, I'm not the guy who, who, who likes to say, okay, this is the, the, no, the, the best record that we ever did and the best songs that we ever wrote. And yeah, but but it, it, that's it actually. That that's what it's all about at the end. And uh, we really struggled when we started to write that record because we were in some kind of a bubble where we where we thought, okay, this sounds like this and this sounds like that and of again like this and we were just not satisfied with it we 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 we, we recognize that we are at a certain point in our lives and in and and our personalities where we thought okay we just do not want to make an afterglow too so we try to to find some situations and new ways of of writing music where we could uh, uh, uh develop us as people and also the music at all and i think we did it quite well at the end but uh, the, the way to it was quite difficult honestly because we we really had to f- f- go on on a di- different step to 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 find a way how we could do it like we have to use synthesizers we have to work with sample libraries we have to work with uh, each things that we were not familiar with because we just did it uh, the old way with mm-hmm. just the guitar and some riffs and the air is it heavy then it's heavy and okay we take it and write a song of it so um, what the people basically can expect is in just completely new type of music from rising insane but with the same style of music just with more uplifting and different vibes than it was used uh, as on afterglow or in porcelain we 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 really try to to get that vibe that we want to create something uplifting something newer something fresher to 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 uh, yeah, be a little bit less emotional than we had it on Afterglow because we just uh, had uh, a lot of mental health things on it. And now we try to be or to have mental health also, but more in the way to uh, 
to motivate the people just to go through through this stack of situations and to get out of, out of it and to make the best out of it. And I think this is something that you can really expect. There are also some songs on the record that are quite heavy. And there are also some songs on it that are quite uh, experimental. Like, for example, Monster that came out yesterday or The Door that is going to be uh, released within the release of the record. But um, there are also songs like Carousel it's quite heavy that we also did release as a single and then there will be also the uh, uh, final single release uh, or i don't know it's uh, we, we call it focus track and okay. uh, with the release of, of the album and it will be the, the song is called wildfires and it's definitely the heaviest one of the record and uh, I, I i think it's a potpourri of everything it's but it's still heavy and still uh, something new it's still heavy, but there's going to be a more expansive take out from one game because what you're talking about, you know, what you talk about with Porcelain when you wrote that record or when you talk about Afterglow, you added more to this idea of what Wildfire is going to be, adding these synthesizers, adding these sample libraries. And it, it, it did put you out of your comfort zone. I could easily tell when you were speaking about that as a, you know, from the writing perspective because it's something that's brand new. And is that going to take away from some potentially authenticity from some of the prior music that you worked with? But if you look at it from a standpoint of this is a new tool to use, this is something that we can try and work out with. And we can play with this so much that we can see how these different ideas are going to work into our music, into our style to basically get these different sounds across and get these different emotions across to the listeners. Because yeah, there are some songs that are on the album, especially the singles you released right now, have a little bit more of an experimental take, have a little more of this uh, like ambient flow to them to yep. really open you up in a more emotional state than just going heavy, brutal. Because if you go heavy and straightforward throughout you know, these songs, you're going to evoke certain emotions, but heavy music is going to limit the emotions that you can really portray and how you can portray them. When you put in some synthesizers and you put in different samples, it's going to create a different sound that's going to take the feeling of that emotion, turn it around and put it to you. Maybe it's the same emotion, but in a different way, in a different manner, in yep. a different capacity. Absolutely. And you guys hit on it with some of these because listening through, it's like, you know, rain, monster, monster is going to have a different taste to it. Lighthouse is going to have a different feel to it. Carousel and burn are going to have completely different feels to them as well. In terms of the heaviness, like for me, I really like the malicious. And then all of a sudden I'm still going through it. I get to burn. I'm like, okay, these songs are different, but I absolutely love them both because of the differentiations between the two, but how well they absolutely achieve where the song is going for and how it's going to hit you emotionally and take you through that journey from start to finish in your head. Exactly. That, that, that's what we really aim for. You oh. just summarized it perfect. <laughs> I was hoping that's what you guys are aiming for because I could tell on that as well. I think I could really tell on the whole entire song once I heard Lighthouse for the first time or the whole record because that one really showed and encapsulated the idea that you had in much more of a, a little bit more of a post-hardcore kind of feel to it, but not necessarily as heavy, but still heavy in terms of how the emotion was going to play into you and how your mind was going to take it. That's really where I saw a different type of heaviness. But then again, you get to Carousel and Burn, you're like, okay, we're right back at this again. Let's keep going. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And it was a lot of fun. And I think uh, when you were talking about the album too, you were talking kind of about taking just like, you know, ideas of where you are now in life and trying to push forward and get to different points where you want to get in life. Was that more the idea around where these songs were built in order to get to that drive of a larger emotional scope? Or where was the idea for the concept of this album to really push forward this idea and these songs to have a much wider array of overall composition to them? Musically, I would say we we are not that kind of concept band. We we we, we are just going to write and and uh, see where where we will get at the end and what we feel about it. Um, I, I I think lyrically, when Aaron is going to write the lyrics for for the songs and 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 all these kind of things, he has an idea in mind what he wants to tell tell to 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 the fans and uh, to the audience. But for me, writing music is more about uh, what I feel in, in, in the moment and how I feel with that, uh, with the kind of music that I actually write. So if, if I have a riff or a sample or a beat or, or anything else, it's like, okay, I, I really dig that. I really like that. And I could imagine to make something out of it and then it, it just get developed. And uh, I don't think about a, a certain direction that we want to go with it or, or not. It, 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 when I have a look on, on, on that record on Wildfires, 
I really have to say that uh, I had no idea that uh, that the music would go into that direction. It just came out of us. And uh, lyrical wise, uh, that was definitely the idea for, of Aaron to uh, to to find a different direction than uh, the typical mental health thing. But mm. the mental health thing is still a, a really important thing for us because we are just thinking that it's. Uh, really necessary in our, 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 our today's uh, uh, society to speak about problems, to speak about depressions, uh, about all these kind of things. And we just wanted to give, give, give the fans or the audience something that they can have a look on and to, to have a, a, a good feel about it. Just to say, okay, when I listen to Monster or when I listen to Rain or, or anything else from the record, I'm, I'm just feeling good. I, I I have a great feeling. I I can recognize with the with with the with the uh, lyrics, and that's what we actually aim for. That's kind of what I was hoping for. I, I probably should have uh, worded that question a bit differently, but you hit on it, especially when you're talking about where the lyrics ended up coming from, because there are so many, especially so many bands, especially in heavy music, that focus on the mental health aspect in a lot of the records that they're writing. Yep. And don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely happy that bands are talking about mental health, that that's a huge major focus, because it does speak to all of us at some capacity because it's going to relate to certain events or certain experiences that we've had and it allows us to better understand them going forward when it came what you guys did here with wildfires it seemed less of the focus on how you got there or where you are in it but more of a taking a look at where you are and how do you get out of it so there's always different sides of it and it looked like on your guys end, especially when i was listening to it is how do we progress forward through this in order to not only become healthier but overall make sure that we are healthier for ourselves and everybody else around us yep. so that we end up creating a better world around us than what we're living in right now. And when it came to you talking about how you wrote these songs, I absolutely love the fact that you know you don't have any agenda. You're just kind of going out there and just, you're. if you have a riff in your head, if you have an idea in your head, if you have a beat, put it out there and see where it takes you because that sound is going to dictate the emotion because you're going to relate to it in a certain emotional way. And that's going to teach you and kind of like give you a roadmap in your head of where can this song go? How can we make this happen? How does this feel? And you're going to let your heart guide you so that when we listen to the song, we know exactly where it's coming from, from an emotional standpoint, but it's not as specifically directed to what you were thinking of in that moment or relating it to. It's based down to the emotion and the storytelling of it. So in our minds, we can find that idea or we can find that example or find that experience, plug it in in our own brains when we're listening through it and really connect with the song and feel the emotion that you're feeling and fully understand the outcome that we want to understand with you through the overall emotion that we get from the listening experience, either the vocals, the lyrics, and especially the instrumentation as well. Absolutely. If you can't tell, I've done this quite a while and I can easily connect with a lot of music like this in a very, <laughs> very consistent capacity because there's so many times I hear stuff, I'm like, I can pick up on this. And that's why it's just for songs like me, like I'll use Burn as the example. That one, right when I listen, I'm like, this is what I, this has really suited me a lot more because it had the energy creating a feel of like discontent and aggression towards yeah. maybe the current situation. And then when the cleaner vocals came in, it just still hit hard and powerful, but it had a more upbeat feel. I said it felt like, you know, feedback by a day to remember in a way, but I wasn't the biggest fan of feedback by a day to remember. This was what I really would have loved it to be. And I found it. It's called Burn by Rising Insane. <laughs> yeah, but, but Burn is a, is a really interesting song because this is something that we started to write in an afternoon and an evening is what uh, it was done. And and I remember when, when Aaron was sitting next to me and, and I was saying, okay, this is going to be a really, really a great life song. And uh, we, we already played it in the beginning of, of this year. And, and the tour that we have with Set Your Sales uh, was, was our co-headline tour. And, and, and it was awesome. It, we, we started with that song. And it's like uh, just uh, exploding. It's, it's, it's great, honestly. We've never thought of that. But, uh, but it's, it's, it's just great. It, it should be exploding. It's a lot of fun. It has a consistent drive to it. And you can feel this building up against something but with confidence in it and with positivity behind it that's what i liked about it because i feel there's so much time in heavier music where a lot of the emotion especially towards anger and discontent it gets heavy it gets darker and it gets brutal and this kind of built you up in that heavier capacity but it was also uplifting and confident at the same time. It was yeah, absolutely. It was a hell of a lot of fun to go through, man. I was listening to it. I'm like, <laughs> last time, I'm just like, woo! I got to write all my thoughts down on this. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I see. What you're, I, I get it. Definitely. 
Yeah, and it was it was a heck of a lot of fun. And so I got one, I got another question for you around this. So there are singles out right now. I know you said Wildfires is the focus track. So and but that song has not been released yet. So Wildfires can be included in this question of the songs that are not released as singles yet. Which are which is a song that you are most excited for people to hear? The door. Oh, why? Because it's com- a, a, a completely new thing to us. It's uh, something that I was really afraid of when we were when our Aaron wrote the song, he, and he had this idea for years in his mind. I I know knew that, and I was always really afraid of it because I was, I'm 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 the guy I'm the I'm the typ- typical German guy who, who when when a thing works for me then then it's great and then just let uh, focus on the thing that works and this is something that is new actually and. Um, yeah, this is uh, something where where I really had uh, or have to say that uh, uh, yeah, it's it's so something new for us that I'm really really excited to see what the people will will, will tell about and um, yeah, that, that's it. Oh, trust me, I understand the mindset of don't fix what isn't broken. If it's working out for you, you know, keep going for it because that's a positive thing. But when it comes to being a creative or when it comes to music as well. Try something new. You never know what might happen from there. And now I'm excited to hear the door more than anything because I want to see what new thing you guys came up with after listening through the singles on this album. I'm quite excited right now, man. When am I <laughs> at the 23rd yet? Yeah. Ah! yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna, yeah it's gonna, we will hear it. It's got to come sooner. It's got to come sooner. And then I know following the release of the album, you guys are going to be doing a headlining run in Germany, I believe, in November. So you guys excited for that? I have to assume you are just to bring a lot of these songs to not only everybody else in Germany, but also show them the expanded sound that Rising Insane now has. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are really excited for it. So do I have to sell a kidney or something or try and, you know, ship myself there via FedEx just to try and see a show in November and not have to pay an exorbitant amount in airfare? (laughs) <laughs> yeah but maybe there are uh, there should be plans to come to uh to, to america or, uh, anytime but uh yeah at the moment it is uh yeah i i think we are just small at that point to 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 be interesting for 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 the uh different continent but hopefully there uh will be some time where this is going to work Hey, I've seen a lot of bands come on the podcast. Again, I've said I've been doing this over five years where there's bands I've wanted to see come over to the U.S. And from what I started, I'm finally starting to see a good, consistent chunk coming over. I'm like, this is great. Let's keep this rolling. And now I'm waiting for like all the German bands I've interviewed. Like, come on, they got to get going over here. Come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I have to add Rising Insane to the list now. It's like, okay, we got to figure out. How can we get more people to listen to them in the United States so that then there is a huge market for them here and then they get to go on tour with, I don't know, throw out a name like Bad Omens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Bad Omens, something like that. Or for me, at least, what what a really big highlight is, is something like Bleed From Within. They are are not from, from, from America, but they are so... I, I th- th- this is a band that I'm I, I'm really digging lately. They I I really love them. It's just, it's just the purest and uh, best form of metal uh, in my opinion that is existing. Oh lord, that just puts smile on my face because the last time I saw Bleed from Within was here in my hometown in Milwaukee for Milwaukee Metal Fest. That was in May. And I'm in the middle of a pit and there's this woman, she's about maybe a little bit over five feet tall, was like, hey, you want to do jujitsu in the pit? I don't know how to do jujitsu. So I said, okay, let's give it a shot. So she's trying to like take me down jujitsu style in the pit, but I'm like, I- I'm-, I'm a foot taller than you. I'm-, I- I'm-, I'm a lot stronger and a lot heavier. So this isn't going to work. I somehow picked her up and I had her in perfect position to do like a WWE style power bomb to her in the middle of the floor. But I'm like, this seems like a bad idea if I actually pull this off. But it's bleed from within, so I kind of want to do it. No, we're just going to put you down over here. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are. A, 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 this is an unbelievable, great life band. They are so tight. So, we got right. So, how about this? Bleed from within, rising insane, US tour, 2025, 2026. I, we are in. We are in. <laughs> Definitely. We Sign them up. Want, want any money? We just want to play. It's, it's fine. 
sign them up. They're already in. Otherwise, we're going to have to start selling kidneys and potentially pinky toes, everybody. So <laughs> you might need uh, some scalpels and saws, but we got this. Because how metal is that, man? <laughs> well, Sven, before we wrap this up, I have one more question for you. Are you ready for it? Yeah. It's a question I love to ask everybody because it allows us to get to know more of the artists that you love and get to know more artists that deserve recognition. So can you name me three bands or artists that you love that you would love to see more people get uh, into and support right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, there is an, an, an a band a band here from from our hometown. It's called they are called Malfoy, like uh, uh, the guy from Harry Potter. But uh, they are also doing metalcore. I think they they deserve uh, much more attention that they actually have. And it's okay, definitely. I, I think this uh, this is a band that could could be much more bigger. I, I really love them. I'm 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 a good friend to Christoph, and and also to Peter. And these guys just deserve much more attention. They've been also to America some years ago, and and they are they are really really great. Yeah, and now a third band. Wow, this is. Uh... Yeah, it's a band that we actually is started touring with in the in the, in in the beginning of this year. It uh, they are called Winter. Um, it's, it's it's just German music uh, or German German lyrics, but they are also de- deserving much more attention. They are really great, great and really great guys. So so yeah, that, that basically it. You're not the only person that's brought up Vinta before. I would have asked this question. So. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. I can't remember who said it, though, but I'm like, it's not the first time I've heard it when I asked. Oh, I'm, I believe it was great. That, that, that's yeah. awesome. So let's keep it going. When you said Anna's okay, I'm like, I think more people know about them, but they definitely need more recognition than they're getting right now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah definitely. They, they, they are just uh, it's, uh, su- such a good life band, and uh, we've been touring with them in 2018, and uh, they are really nice guys, and, and uh, yeah, they, they definitely uh, they deserve much more attention, especially out of Germany. In Germany, they are... Uh, on a good track, I would say, but uh, in, in, in international wise, there could be a little bit more, and 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 yeah, especially in America. All right, we'll add it then. America, bleed from within, and is okay. Rising insane, twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six. That's how we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, let's start it. Let's start it. Well, Sven, as we wrap up this podcast, I'm going to wrap it up with three things. First things first, when it comes to Rising Insane, when it comes to the album Wildfires, you're going to want to go check it out. You're going to want to go follow along this band. You're going to want to see him live when you get the chance. So best thing you do to stay in touch with them and stay in contact and know everything. Go to the description of the podcast where it says, Find Rising Insane online, links, labels for everything, for social media, YouTube, where you can stream the music, where you can pre-order, where you can download it, and where you can get some merch and get your uh, tickets as well for their shows in Germany in November. So don't miss out. If you have to sell a kidney, think about it first, but if that's what you want to do, go for it and then get to a show. Just sell it. Yeah. Now it's time for number two. So whenever I guess in the podcast, I enjoy from the podcast, I make a certain promise as a way to say thank you for taking the time and I would appreciate uh supporting the band in the future. And this is how I do it. It is a when I get to see you perform live for the first time. So when I see Rising Insane perform for the first time, I will find you. I will give you a big old hello, but that's not the promise. The promise is first round's on me. <laughs> yeah, it's great. We're also great at uh, throwing the first round. So I think we will definitely uh, get an uh, agreement on that. Oh, then we're going to have some fun. We're definitely yeah, going to have some fun. And now time for number three, Sven. I cannot end this episode by saying goodbye. That is way too final because I made you a promise and I want to see the band continue to grow. And I want to have you back on the podcast as well because this was a hell of a lot of fun. So this is not goodbye, my friend. This is, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye. Woo! Well, folks, this is my interview with Sven from Rising and saying now it's time for Kevin's final thought. And I could tell that when Sven was talking, I mean, he was energetic. He was hyped up. But you could tell there are a little bit of nerves in there when we were talking about the creation of the album specifically. And the reason I say that is because when we talked about the creation of the album, he was talking about the things they added in there. They talked about and since samples and different ideas, and that changed up a little bit of a heavier style of them. And it's a little nerve wracking because you're going to a different sound, you're going to a different style, or not necessarily a different style, but you're evolving your style as well. And you know, you never know how that's gonna go because 
if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And their sound necessarily wasn't broken for them, so why fix it? They're not fixing it, they're expanding it, and it worked out really well. Because on a song like Burn, yeah, that was straightforward, it was fantastic, absolutely. On a song like Lighthouse, which is out right now, I thought it was a really well done emotional opening from a post-hardcore side of, you know, things and post-hardcore side of life. And the programming, building the wall of sound, allows us to feel the building sense of emotions of hope that is a lighthouse when we are lost. The vocals did the fantastic job and the growing urgency in that want for hope and the emotional tone of the person that has waited too long. It really worked out well. Or the other single that's out there that I really like called Malicious, where... It was like they dove headfirst into something like what Bad Omens would have done on Death of Peace of Mind from a programmatic standpoint, but they allowed the instrumentals to build up the energy and the tone with a dystopian future in mind and career we've created for ourselves. While the vocals start to get lower and less energetic, but then explode as they grow to get more unclean and show a lot more raw anguish and aggression, I want to see them keep going on a path like this because they're expanding their sound, they're trying something new. And when they go to the older sound, it works. When they try something new and they experiment with it, they put the quality behind it and it absolutely works. So be sure to go check out Wildfires by Rising Tain when it comes out on the 23rd. Go script to the podcast below where it says find Rising Tain online. Links labels for everything are down there. Social media wise, where you can stream the album, where you can pre-order it, and where you can get some merch and see them in uh, Germany when they play live in November. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Corporate Earth Podcast right down here. New episodes of the podcast every single Tuesday and Thursday and new Reaction videos every single Friday as well. If you're on Spotify or podcast, hit the follow button. You still get the full episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday. Hit the like button because it helps push these videos, the algorithm, or the episodes as well. Hit like on our links for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram because, well, you can follow us along there and see crazy clips on the podcast and get previews of the episodes before you even watch them. Also, thank you. On that note, that's good for you, everybody. Thank you for watching, listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know I never single one. Sounds a big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all! Yeah.